I've been diving since 1968, and diving with giant sea bass has got to rank on the top of my list for best experiences. Diving with these gentle giants is absolutely captivating. They seem to be as curious about us as we are of them. While you're looking at them, they can be there one moment, and then all of a sudden you'll hear this loud thump caused by the movement of their tail, and they've completely disappeared. How something that large can move so quickly is certainly amazing. It was really remarkable. It's got right down to the front of the uh, buoy where you dropped it. Susie and I were swimming up forward. And the first thing we see is this sort of bat ring, sort of going around in circles. The next thing you sort of look up and out of nowhere has appeared this uh, black sea bass. It was truly uh, surprising. So Susie's taking a picture of this fish. And the next thing, she didn't realize there was a much bigger one laying in the sand watching her. On the second dive, it was Black Sea Bass City. Like there were three of them just hanging around and hanging around. And I was filming then and I was able to get like really close to one within about three feet. And it was big. It was almost as big as I am. It was amazing when we hopped in there. The first thing we did, we went right down the anchor line, and bingo, there you got one black sea bass about this long, just kind of nestled right into the rock. Look up, and there's a big wall of barracuda that came in right behind. This big black sea bass had to have been three feet long, four feet long. Couldn't get a much better shot. It was beautiful. What personally interested me in giant sea bass in California is my background is very strong in spawning aggregations in coral reef fishes. So I was drawn to the giant sea bass when I heard about the possibility of aggregations forming at Anacapa Island. Dr. Dullmeyer tracked Anacapa's giant sea bass by implanting acoustic tags in fish they had caught during the summer aggregation. These acoustical tags emit sounds in the form of a coded signal for five years or more. Each implanted audio tag has a unique signal identifying individual fish. So we've been able to track fishes from Anacapa for going on five years now, and we have these remote data logging hydrophones that every time the fish swims by one of these things, it picks up the signal and it logs it. Okay. Fish number two was here on October 27th at nine o'clock in the morning. We have so many of these out in, in the Channel Islands that we can track these fishes almost round the clock. We have documented island to island movement in these uh, giant sea bass. Particularly, we have a couple fish that each year come to Anacapa during the spawning season and then they return to their home, which is a Catalina Island. That's a pretty long ways to go and they're swimming over some very deep water. One of the surprising results from our tracking work on giant sea bass is that there's a very distinct seasonal pattern of these fish from deep water in the wintertime to shallow water in the summertime. Now what are these fish doing over this flat sandy bottom? Well, we found through some diet studies that we did in Mexico that that's really where they spend all their time hunting. They're not an apex predator that's chasing down mackerel. They're sniffing around the bottom and they're catching things that are buried in the mud. They're catching a lot of skates, rays, small flatfishes. A real favorite of theirs are mantis shrimp, believe it or not. You find that in almost every stomach and small lobster. Being a bottom feeder brings us back to what I mentioned earlier about possibly having uh, very poor reproductive success in California. It's 
widely known that we have a lot of PCB and particularly DDT compounds like DDE in Southern California. It's one of the hottest spots in the world for that. Now this fish being a bottom feeder like it is, feeding on benthic organisms, is getting super doses of these things. And I've actually measured them in the, in the gonads and the brain tissue of giant sea bass that we collected in Southern California and found the levels very high. I mean, uh, high enough where I believe personally, I mean, I have no proof that it could be affecting their reproductive success. There's another possibility that there's been enough of a temperature change in Southern California to affect recruitment all by itself, that only during certain years when the temperature is just right, the currents are just right, are you gonna get a, a really good successful spawn that produces lots of babies in that year. What I'm saying is that this is a possibility that it's affecting their reproductive success, but it's not been proven. So there you have it, details on the lifestyle of the giant sea bass of California, a fish that seems to be making a recovery, but we cannot be sure. What we do know is that for now, divers will be able to visit the summer spawning aggregations at Catalina and Anacapa. So despite the problems that these fish face, the return of the giant sea bass proves that conservation works. Thanks for joining us.